Welcome, everybody, to another exhilarating episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. Today, I have another lineup of some wild lockup and crime related clips coming your way. If you're new to the channel and enjoy yourself, do not forget to hit that like, subscribe, notification bell before you leave, and check out my playlist with many more videos for you to start watching today. Now, for the first clip, it's going to show something I'm very familiar with, at least when I was in jail. I see many inmates do pranks on other individuals, dare them, do things to kind of help us kill our time and make us laugh. But this is going too far, and if this were ever to have happened to me, I would have been forced to retaliate. Friend or not, he would have became my foe that day. They violate this guy in many different ways, and I'll break it down after the clip. Oh, man. That was like right in his mouth too. You know it went, it, you know, the, the, the force from the water falling, it was spread his lips open a bit, had to. Now it's hard to see, but dude's got his fist balled up. If I were to guess, they got to squabbling a bit after this one. Either way, like I said, they violated him in many ways. I'm not talking about gang violation, okay? I'm just talking about they disrespected him. First and foremost, and the most disrespectful part of all of this, they're dumping mop bucket water on them. Look, people don't get their personal mop buckets. They clean every single spot in that whole dorm with that mop bucket. Okay, do you not know how many germs is probably floating around in that? And he just poured it straight on his face. I mean, honestly, he probably got up off that bed with three new diseases. And second of all, they did it to him while he's sleeping. That's like the most sensitive time in prison. You don't want to have someone around you that's messing with you while you're sleeping. You got to get far away from him or stop him in his tracks immediately. And last but not least, he poured it all over his bed, sheets, pillow, everything. He has to change all that out now, and who knows if he has any more to do it with. If you are to ask me everything about this clip is wrong, do not ever do that in prison. Prank or not. Next up, this is coming from a channel called Decaying Midwest, and he finds some stairs that leads to an area that brings back some nostalgically bad memories. I found these stairs in the courthouse. They had jail cells in the basement with prisoner transport tunnels, question mark. That is absolutely correct, my friend. One of the jails I did time in would transport inmates underground in a tunnel just like this. It was almost like a cave had water dripping on both sides of the walls all the way on the floor. Shackled like the human centipede with 30 people behind you. Echoes of the chains reverberating in my brain right now. Terrible memories not to mention. So nervous not knowing if you're getting 20 or 50 years in prison. Walking in that tunnel to the courthouse. At least that's how it was for me. They would transport the inmates down an elevator. You go into a holding cell. That holding cell you would get chained up. Then you go through this tunnel. Then this tunnel lead to another elevator. And they'll split you up from that point on depending on what courtroom you go to. And you'll get in the elevator again. It'll bring you right up to the courtroom you got to go to. You know that little brown door you see the inmates walk in and out of? Yeah, there's a holding cell back there. And it's connected to these tunnels. At least, like I said, the ones that I've seen. So this is definitely a prisoner transport tunnel. Pretty wild though. Oh, look at those little mini stairs. Still has power. Wow, this looks like a scene out of a zombie apocalypse. The flickering lights going on in an abandoned prison is wild. I don't know if I would want to leave if they had power running. Shoot, that set up a nice little laboratory in there. Live streams. Stop playing the doors still work? Man, I'll definitely be kicking in there on a regular basis. Oh my. I can't believe they just let this stuff run like this. They had to have flipped a breaker or something. Why can't I find anything cool like that, man? You know, I probably end up going to prison for breaking and entering. Next up, ladies, pay attention. This is the best of the best coming from Idaho's prison system. Feeling lonely? Need a pen pal? Reach out to these young men. They're waiting. Hello, everybody. I've been laying pipe for years. Uh, I like fat bitches, fast cars, and tattoos. Anything else, probably ain't for you. Hello, my name is Vicente Garcia Borja, better known as Puppet. I guess you could say I'm a hopeless romantic, probably because I'm a little Ooh. flirt. 
Maybe Ooh. just because I'm just a little toxic. I don't know. I ain't trying to get into all the details just yet. I'm trying to focus on putting a smile on your face, making you laugh. <laughs> and if you'd like to get to know me, go ahead and hit me up on JPEG. Hey, but don't you worry. We'll get to that toxic shit later. Now, like I said, this is the best of the best of Idaho. These clips got millions of views. And as a matter of fact, before it even went viral, I reacted to this puppy a while ago. Mr. Mundo seems to be very popular with 3.2 million views. He's a heartthrob. Ladies absolutely love him. Kind of like Shawn Michaels, the heartbreak kid of Pin Pal. Let's call me Mundo. I'm 34 years old and I'm into pretty untrustworthy girls. I got a thing for them. If you ever been called trash, that's my kind of treasure. If you ever been called a hoe, you ain't. People just jealous of you because they ain't out there living their life. Anyways. You got daddy issues, hit me up. I am sad at how easily the first one would have had me. Oh God. These girls are pretty much derobing themselves in the comments. Mundo speaking poetry. Mundo can be a part of my Mundo, jeez. Really thinking about getting JPay. Next up, we have an inmate that has a list of rules that might help you survive prison. Hey, these folks trying to figure out what rule number one is, bro. Rule number one, he's worried about money. Rule number two, remember the first one. Rule number three, dry these hoes. Rule number four, I know we drive. Rule number five, fuck a couple of duckers. My also song. <laughs> All I heard was rule number one, get bitch, give me my money. And rule number two, I believe, was remember rule number one. The rest, I can't even begin to decipher, but I think you'll survive if you follow those first two rules. Folks, I figure out what rule number one is, bro. Rule number one, he's worried about money. Rule number two, remember the first one. Rule number three, dry these hoes. Rule number four, I know we drive. Rule number five, fuck a couple of duckers. My also song. But keep a close eye, especially on the background cell right here. Seems like they're having a pretty peaceful time, have some communication with another inmate, and this is it on a bad day. Someone set it to blaze. God. <laughs> They're going to put it out. Nice. Oh, that was that, that was uncalled for. <laughs> the first and only comment on this video is wash that baby. They definitely washed those fools in there, man, because the first bucket extinguished it. The second bucket made sure they don't light it again. Now the next clip has two parts, but they're not connected. It just kind of cosigns to what this guy's saying. He had a thing on him about this big two on big two, two, two big, big. Oh, no. Yeah. He could have butt my ass, but <laughs> he did. He kept it clear with a man and shit. They put them hands on me. But I was like, this big boy, I came out my shoes. And then when I ain't had no socks, he had a thing on him about this big two on big two. two. And right here, he's speaking about a fight where dudes could have stabbed him up. They had two huge bangers sitting on the side of their hips. Next clip's going to show a couple things, including someone carrying a blade exactly like he's saying. Happy <laughs> birthday, man. I'm on rocket time, man. Long live the rocket, man. Throw the rocket pride at me. Yeah. First off, he's pumping a Rolex in prison. Unreal. Second of all, that's the best glazed cake I've ever seen. I don't eat a lot of sweets in prison, but I'd try that. But do you see this? That's not a broom handle, all right? That's a banger. Shank time, 101, ladies and gentlemen. This thing is gigantic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all that type of got Air Forces on. Now the handle is wrapped in cloth and it's about five inches long, which tells me that the blade's probably like 15. But like I said, this just cosigns to what dude was saying, man. Before he got into the fight, can you imagine that though? You know, you're, you're about to fight someone in prison and you see two blades on, on his hip the size of that. So, you know, it can be very dangerous fighting people in prison, man. You never know what they have on the talk. Next up, we got ourselves a little prison cooking. Over here. Wow. This is top notch. Everything gets pretty hot now. Everything gets pretty hot. Everything ain't nothing to play with. Yeah, that's a sizzle you need to hear right there. Are those sticks of butter? That looks pretty good right there. We're gonna drop the eggs in there. Oh man, that's a bunch of scrambled eggs right there. Wow, it's not gonna leak? If he can dump all those eggs into that fryer and it not leak,
That's a well-made hibachi skillet, my friend. Look, you can tell too. If I were to bet it all, they definitely got a welding shop at this prison. Because that's the only way they could have gotten this thing egg yolk tight like this. I don't see them using a bunch of solder. No, no, no. Someone with some talent put this skillet together. Next up, kittens inside of Alabama's death row prison. Huh. What are you eating them? Tuna, man. Tuna. Ooh, spoil. Ooh. Boy, he getting spoiled. Getting his hair brushed. See, he don't get no bed net down. You see me? Nothing can't. like that toothbrush brush. Humans don't get treated bed net down. No. no, sir, they don't. No, no, no. Get back, there. We ain't doing that. Get back. We ain't getting them all them jerky now. He does some of that swole. Chairing that tuna up. To be so small. I'm surprised he gonna eat the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Hungry little Jang. Loving that tuna. But I don't think they're on death row. There's too many people walking around next to the person. Usually they're on lockdown, you know, 24 hours a day. So this sounds more like a dorm. It's probably their stray cats. Alabama has a lot of those. But they do have programs for inmates, death row inmates, you know, to watch cats and stuff. I guess it helps them, you know, cope with what's coming their way. Uh, not to mention, you know, I knew a few people that were in prisons that, you know, trained dogs. So, I think it's a really good thing. I would have, I would have loved to have had a pet in prison. Yeah, right before the. Yeah, this cat's getting the treat. We got somebody getting spoiled on. Oh well, he can spoil, treat it like a king. Just want to show y'all a quick little thing, man, of how to mats and stuff look in prison bro look see how thin that thing is that's thin man that's what some people got to sleep on for years man i hate to stop him because he's about to get into some real deep stuff but that mat right there if you're to ask me is kind of sort of a cadillac which is a good one. I've seen many variations, and the worst ones that I see makes that thing look great. Inside this little rubber plastic coating is these little white strings. They're nylon, and they're super strong. Inmates use them for many things. One of the more popular is dental floss. Shit, bro. The one thing I can say, man, cherish your freedom. And cherish what you have, man, because any given situation, man, any mistake, Anything in life, man, you can wind up living like this, man. And this is not cool. Oh. So cherish your freedom and cherish what you have, man, because, like I said, this is not the lifestyle. I'm out of here, y'all, man. Y'all have a good day. And that's a fact. Cherish your freedom, ladies and gentlemen. Ain't nothing sweeter than walking around freely in your house, neighborhood, woods, state, whatever.